everyone. Welcome back to the Hellbound Podcast. I am actor Michael Chan, and my co-host is... Uh, Alex Blackburn, and I'm the founder of the Hellbound and Isolation Film Festivals. And yeah, um, discover of new ways to keep myself awake. Uh, that's what I've been kind of <laughs> looking into, not and through also, drugs. also, superstar filmmaker, editor. Dude, you sell yourself short. No, I do, I do. It's just... Um, I, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, from from when I started editing, uh, but twenty years ago now. It's uh, kind of a little anniversary, but twenty years of editing, and then obviously through different grades, working on as a run on Band of Brothers and working on a couple of feature films. I tend to work for other people, and this year I'm making a really concerted effort to work on my own shorts, work on my work on myself in many ways, mm-hmm. and uh, with having um. I won't go into too much detail with having a partner that's not very well. She's seriously ill. It's helped me. It's pointed me in the right direction, in the direction I should be going in personally in many ways. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's a, a year of working on myself this year. And that working on yourself is definitely nice, just like how I'm in therapy. So, yeah, well, that's that's something I, I looked at and I was party to when after coming out of hospital with uh, PTSD from having COVID pneumonia and all of that. Um, and it helped. It really does help. It helped me get mm-hmm. through. It helped me function as a normal person, you know, normal member of society after after that. So, yeah, and I think I, I keep describing myself as the train at the end of Back to the Future 3. I'm, I'm ready to go off the rails and there's nothing stopping me. I've put those different colored uh fuel to the fire in in the uh, chamber now so i i feel as i'm gonna burn out <laughs> burn out um hey man, yeah. i totally understand that and um you know yeah. it just gotta keep pushing forward right yeah absolutely right you gotta especially when i had this kind of uh moment a few days ago where it's not a it's not about i i don't need to look after myself i can do that at some other point it's parking myself and just helping someone else that's in, you know, dire need of support. And I know, I know at some point I'll have some sort of a uh, moment, uh, but this isn't the time. This is the time to look after, a, you know, my partner in life and uh, watch more movies and watch more horror as well. Yeah, based on what I know about what's going on, I, I do hope that everything works out in the end and that uh, they'll have some relief. No, I appreciate that. And uh, there is no other option. It's going to happen. That's my attitude now. So I'm going to be quite bullish about it. I know reality can kick in, but uh, you know, you've know you got to be super positive and this is what's going to happen. So I totally believe yeah. it's going to happen. I believe yeah. it. I know you have your support of myself, you know, my family, and all your friends here in Canada. No, and <laughs> that's a really good segue, actually, because mm-hmm. uh, we're going to talk about probably – infinity pool that you finally finished but before that i've got a segue and it's um the country of birth for that is canada and the company Ooh. i'm talking about is tim hortons and that's that's the unboxing <laughs> i have they're so no I've, longer canadian i don't know if you know that it's not canadian no they got bought out oh no they're way that makes me so by, sad um, do you think they're brazilian Right. No. I'm gonna for this for this exercise and the branding and everything. I'm gonna cut that. Out. I'm not gonna cut that out. Um, oh no! Don't cut it out. No, no, <laughs> it is a staple of Canada, the world. Needs to know that, that that Tim Hortons is, although part of our Canadian identity, is no longer owned by a Canadian company. <laughs> Whereas yeah. Toys R Us, which originally was an American company, is now a Canadian company. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so today, I. I, I want you to kind of tell me what the differences might be. There is, there's two main coffee options. There's obviously lots of cool versions, uh, like with ice and everything. This is yep. a Tim. This is a Tim Hortons, a, a dark roast coffee with milk. That's what I kind of normally go for. Uh, they uh, use arabica beans. I don't know what the regular ones use, but yeah. I do know they they push the fact that they arabica beans. Yeah, because it's all like you know, brand. It's more bitter. And the um, the option I went for in terms of food, I had the chicken thing earlier, but I got the mixed box of twelve, which is ridiculously mm. big for me. And it's not so just. Wait, did they me. open a shop near you? Oh yeah, it's or literally two shop? minutes down the road. Yeah, so it's very Sweet. popular in the UK now. They took over a lot of Burger Kings in the UK. 
and then they well, that would make sense because the company that owns Burger King owns Tim Hortons. Well, there you go. Yeah, and they took over some uh, Pizza Huts as well. So in here, this won't take too long because it's very simple. Um, we might take a screenshot of this actually. These are probably going to go flying everywhere now. Wow, um, but I went. For... Um, <laughs> I actually see... went for all of them, all the different ones, and then there was there was only. So you got your honey cruller. You got the uh, maple, maple. Is that the maple glaze? No. Yes. No. Uh, Boston so, cream. That looks like an apple fritter. Yeah, we've got three apple fritters because there's only uh, eight options or ten options. A chocolate dip. Oh, maple dip. Sorry, it's called maple dip. Do you have old fashioned? No, no, no. Sour cream glazed. You have. Yeah. And I don't recognize the the ones with the sprinkles. Usually has a different name. It's usually rainbow color, but you guys have the sprinkles, which are white and red. And I don't know what that one of the Smarties looking things on it is. Oh, it's just some yeah, Smarties and dark chocolate or something. So uh, at some point, at some point, I'll be able to eat those, and I'll have. I'm trying to trying to be a good boy, but I'll I'll have one of those a day if I can resist. Wait, you're not going to eat one on air? Well, yeah, I'm going to have to have the one of the apple fritters. That's my wife's. Fr- oh god, that's so gooey. Oh my god, this is going to get disgusting. Oh man, yours looks so much better than ours. Really? The apple fritters. Oh yeah. I'm going to go for. No, I'm going to go for the glazed. I'm going to keep it keep it classic. All right. Oh my god, this is pure filth. And that isn't just any glaze; it's old fashioned glazed. Uh yes, that's it. That's what they said in the sign. Yeah, it's a I different uh, it's a different fa- flavor of dough. A lot of people hate it here, like the old fashioned. But like my parents and I, it's like it's one of our faves, especially if you dip it coffee. in coffee. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have Put to the do that now. Dip that one. Seriously, it makes it better. Should we label this ASMR now? <laughs> makes me so happy to watch have... my my friend in UK actually <laughs> having have Canadian you... food on the air. Have you ever gotten out of anyone I know? You'd be really great at kind of having the personality to do ASMR. Is that too time consuming for you? I've never done ASMR. I've joked about ASMR. Never done it. A, a friend of mine, he does it now. He's been doing it for a few years, and he's earning really good money from it. Yeah, I, I don't have. I don't think I have time for that. <laughs> Besides, you know, more, all of my time is dedicated to dad jokes outside of acting. So, yeah, I'm one of your regular viewers. <laughs> well, I, and now I apparently have. I'm turning my whole dystopian future novel based on true Ontario history monologues into a series. Wow, <laughs> awesome. You, you, you've seen them, right, on TikTok and on Instagram, where yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. a one-minute uh, monologue. And those things I talk about, they're not fake. Those are real uh, historical uh, happenings, like real parts of history from Ontario and Toronto that I, I am writing in such and and then delivering in such a way that it sounds like it comes from a novel about a dystopian future because if anyone knows anything about what's happening over here in ontario our government is turning us into a a dystopian society yeah Uh, ours is um is trying to distract us whilst you know watch this hand whilst the other hand's doing something devious that's what's happening currently um our government's not even waving anything anywhere they're just pretty overt about it oh wow good example is they they're they uh we have this protected area called the green belt it's very important it has a very important ecosystem Mm. and they just like and they're not supposed to be able to build homes or anything really on it and then all of a sudden he's like no i'm just gonna designate a bunch of the 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 green belt as developable and then his rich uh uh, our premier's rich buddies, who are home, home, you know home developers, went and bought up the land for cheap, and now the land is worth way more. <laughs> there wow. should, you know, there should be the cor- tr- corruption charges or stuff like that. But you know, the guy who's supposed to be looking into the corruption turns out to have gone to you know his daughter's uh, st- uh, uh, party, like wedding. What do you call those things when 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 you're gonna get married and then you have people come over and they give your kid money? That uh, thing. 
Is it, it stag and doe? No, it could be dependent on the religion as well. Shower. Yes. There you go. Sorry. Bridal yes. shower. Uh, they showed up to that, and basically, yeah, we now know that even the the commissioner is corrupt, so nothing's going to happen to our premier. Oh my god! But that that's not for this podcast. Even though it is real life <laughs> horror, that is real life horror. That yeah. stuff is happening over here, and there's a lot more. Like he's trying to privatize our health system. He's gutting our health system, blaming it, like basically saying a private system is better than what we have. But he's the one who gutted it and made it bad. So yeah. So then he's like, "Well, we need private stuff." We're like, "But you you took away our stuff." Yeah. If you just give it back, <laughs> without the private stuff, we're fine. But you know, you yeah. know how that works. Absolutely. So yeah. that's where we're, we're at. Would you like to talk about Infinity Pool? Yes, please, because I keep seeing it advertised towards my eyeballs at the moment. I think it's coming out here soon or or something like that. Well, it was released January 27th of this year in Canada, so 2023. Okay. So the movie is, uh, I've read this on our five-minute reviews already, but I'll, I'll read it for this episode. Uh, guided by a seductive and mysterious woman, a couple on vacation venture outside the resort grounds and find themselves in a culture filled with violence, hedonism, and untold horror. A tragic accident soon leaves them facing a zero-tolerance policy for crime. Either you'll be executed, or if you're rich enough to afford it, you can watch yourself die instead. Uh, it's directed and written by Brandon Cronenberg, son of okay. David Cronenberg. So obviously you would expect that uh, there is a lot of the classic Cronenberg uh, style and subject matter and how you know Cronenberg likes to take what's inside of you and kind of manifest it on the exterior. And this movie, holy moly, is incredible. Is it, um, is it as... Could it be? Is it really obvious that it's Cronenberg's son if you didn't know who was directing it? No, no. He oh, has really? his own style. He really has. He's more artsy than his dad. I noticed. Oh, okay. but that's like I, 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 I like it. I like you know they obvious. I, I want them to be different. I don't want them to be. It's just like you know Stephen King and Joe Hill, right? Like I don't want them to be the same person, even though it's yeah. father and. So with Brandon here, he's done. This is like a masterful movie that deals with a whole bunch of stuff. Like, um, you know, obviously the 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 corruption and just disgusting nature of wealth and how, you know, the, the ultra rich are just despicable people with very few morals, but also looking at the idea that we ourselves like to think we're better we always like to look at them and go oh they're such jerks they're horrible people i can never do that well what happens <laughs> again yeah what happens when you're put in a situation it's your turn to be the ultra rich uh and, and you know like uh it explores things like that and there's a very intense character study now what i found amazing outside of the messaging which was very well done uh is that uh the two leads mia goth who plays gabby and alexander skarsgård who plays james uh 100 committed to their roles wow. like this is this is a horror film like an artistic drama horror character study and they committed to not only are the obvious you know like the more quote unquote normal acting bits right yeah but they also committed to some of the crazier stuff the insanity the 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 breakdown the dehumanization they went all out and they committed and part of the impact of the messaging comes from the commitment of these actors uh to to the characters that they're playing to bring that message forward and you know mia is relatively new as an actor uh, you know, Mia is from X and from Pearl. Mm -hmm. as you yes. Um, and here she is displaying just why she is such a powerhouse actor and a horror, like a wonderful horror actor who I think potentially has a future not only doing horror, but other things as well, because she has that the acting chops to do it. But if you need someone who can act and do horror, I mean, that's her. Yeah. 
You have her right here. She is just magical uh, in playing her character. Anyways, I, I loved it. I, I do highly recommend everyone check it out. I will say that um, there are, so it's not as gory as the, the, the usual Cronenberg style movies, but there are some kind of more shocking moments to some, like it didn't shock me. I'm, I'm, I'm not really sensitive to, to, to a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not desensitized, but like, it's just, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't bother me, but it might bother some people. Um, can't really say what it is, but it'll be obvious when you see it. Uh, <laughs> It's to the point where the U.S. theatrical release had to censor a, a couple of scenes. So wow. where in Canada, in the Canadian release, it was not censored. That, that's <laughs> the, really interesting. That's really interesting. Get that. Canadians are more tolerant than Americans. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my God. They're, they're so scared of certain things down there, and I'm just like, God, it's a part of us. Oh, my God, the whole point. Why the movie works so well is because you guys are so scared of that stuff. But anyways, yeah, you'll exactly. see what I mean if you watch it. It's really nothing for us up here. But um, no, it's great. But it was the the kind of the shock of it is used to good effect. It, it, there's meaning behind it and, and good artistic meaning behind it. And um, again, it won't be for everyone. I've read reviews from 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 people who watch this. I don't I don't get it or like ugh, this. This is disgusting. But like uh, and then others who like it and then there's critics, you know, like if you look at the critical score, it's not the highest. But do you think again, um, I, do you hmm? think actors on like I'm just looking at something called Crimes of the Future with David, David Cronenberg wrote and directed with uh, Viggo Mortensen, and it's all body, it's, you know, very body horror. Do you think that I, actors I on what, on that like, one? I never no, do you it. think do you think actors that work on a feature film that has such kind of possible shocking visuals, or what's the most difficult thing for an actor to, say, in your position to? What's the point where they get to where it's really difficult to get to? Is it is it something where it has such grim visuals or is it more kind of i mean um, uh, something that they're core? Cool. okay so it, it's obviously every actor is different i can't speak for everyone but uh, for me it, grim visuals on that would never bother me in fact i think i would have a lot of fun watching it get made what would bother me as an actor and be very difficult to play is the perpetrator of a rape yeah uh or uh sexual assault of a child yeah uh murder of children yeah These are the types of things it's not necessary it's not you don't even have to show it it's the headspace a character has to get into because those are such vile things that as 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 a human you should be opposed to and it should revolt you to the point where you don't want to be able to feel anything like that and yet here's a character that you have to yeah. and one time one time in my class classes over the years i had to play not the child stuff but a, a rapist wow that was very difficult for me because it goes against everything that i am everything so it's 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 the mental part for me i i mean i i'm sure there are actors out there who who would be uh, uncomfortable with certain visual aspects but that's not me yeah i remember kevin bacon talking about this um when he was uh, pre um, starring in the woodsman and he was playing a a pedophile that uh i can't i, I watched the film was it 2005 2006 something like that and his Ooh. performance was absolutely one of his best performances ever in his whole career and he was talking about how difficult it was to get to the the headspace of an yep. individual for that and you know you hear about people that do research but how do you even it's just so incredibly difficult to kind of well you better be using your incognito tab and a... <laughs> yeah exactly because um... i don't want any of my search history if i ever have to 
go there again to show any kind of searching for that or else I'm guarantee you CSIS, which is the CIA of Canada, will be up my ass. Yeah. So uh, yeah. just so you know, this is ASMR of me opening a very Chinese plastic bag with a Chinese pineapple bun. What makes it very Chinese? It the is the just, bag. First of all, we shouldn't be using plastic bags anymore, but Chinese places, bakeries all use the same bag. Yeah, and we always have the little heat sealer where you seal it. Right. And anyone who goes to a Chinese bakery will expect each and every single bun you buy. If you buy fifty buns, each one will be individually wrapped on the spot and heat sealed for you. That is what we do. <laughs> huge waste. Yeah. I keep telling them you do not need no. They're like, no, no, we got to do this. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. And I know the owner. I'm like, can you tell your staff to stop doing it for me? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want this. I'm trying. I'm saving you pennies. <laughs> oh, um, my God. Yeah. But no, if they do it for me and, and it'll look bad, right? Because other people might not have the context of my request. And then they'll be like, why is this guy getting poor customer service? Yeah. Oh, there's all of that. I, I think the same way as you do because I used to work in retail and I, I think. You almost have to think for other people around you. It's such an odd situation when you want to be a good person. Yeah, because uh, I don't want I don't want other people to think they're being a dick to me. And uh, yeah. at which point, and then it'll get them in trouble, right? Like it's such a complicated thing with my culture and waste. <laughs> I um uh, I, I see that you're sporting your company uh, uh merch. I uh, yeah, uh, Psychopop Dreams Entertainment hoodie. That's awesome. Uh, Katisha really Shaw, awesome. my best friend and co-owner of Psychopomp, and I both have one of these. Epic. So, who um, who designed I'm the logo? I'm sure the rest of the team are like, Michael, where's ours? I'm like, you know what, guys? Why don't you wait for me to book more roles so I have a little bit more cash to then make you guys custom ones as well? I only afforded two at one point. Yeah. So. Who um who designed the logo? uh it's we have a designer well it, it started with jessica watson uh or sorry her stage name is watson rose she she kind of took the ideas that we all put together and then brought them to an artist and, and did it but i think it it's mainly done on canva though that's awesome that's absolutely awesome <laughs> if the people that aren't we won't be able to watch this michael is munching down on something that's quite tasty so it's called a pineapple bun, but it has no pineapple in it. It's called a, but we call it a pineapple bun because the sugary crust on top of the bread. Yeah. We, we think it looks like the, the outside of a pineapple. Okay. So there's no actual pineapple bun. If you go to a Chinese bakery and order a Ch pineapple bun, please do not expect there to be pineapple. Some of our stores actually had to start like renaming it to like BLB because people were getting really pissed off that there's no pineapple. Oh BLB is like anglicization of what we call it, bolo, bao, bolo is pineapple, bao is bread, like bun. So so we're like, BLB, yeah, it's a BLB, guys, um, which is stupid, but whatever. Um, other places have to put up giant signs next to the, the pineapple, but it's like, no actual pineapple in bun. Wow. Uh, you can get a standard one, which is my favorite, but there's also a uh, coconut filling. Uh, there's uh, barbecue pork filling, uh, red bean paste filling. There's all sorts of fillings you can oh, get. Oh, red bean, red bean paste filling is amazing. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, just on a, a, just a, a thing about food, I'm, I'm quite curious. I've never really asked you this. When you, when you were, you know, in your informative years, were you kind of exposed to all types of food because obviously, you know, it's a, uh, you had a Canadian Chinese upbringing. Were you were the foods and things you weren't allowed to have, or um, I was exposed to as many foods as my parents knew to. So, what that means is they'll take me to non-Chinese restaurants and experiences and all that. Yeah, but it's only within their realm of experience. So, for example, one food I didn't really get to experience until. Uh, high school when we had kind of like uh, bring stuff to school day um, someone brought like butter chicken Indian food actually in general I had never had Indian food until I was in high school uh, and there's many other foods I didn't have until I was an adult and went to explore 
Um, but yeah, it's not like, but my parents did want me to grow up with, with, you know, a, a, uh, a cultured palate as much as they could. Yeah. I, um, that's something that I expose myself to. So as that sounds dreadful, uh, that I try and expose myself to all sorts of, um, foods as often as possible. And, um, I, on a grim note, I, I did, a. My wife and I have updated our wills. We just thought, right, let's get ahead of get ahead of things. And worst case scenario, these these things need to happen. And we uh, had them co-signed by uh, or declared by our neighbors across the road, and they're Japanese neighbors. And it, when I walked into their kitchen, and they were just lovely people, it was it was like another world. It was just absolutely amazing, just to smell everything. Just wanted to sit there and stay for dinner. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't invited, mm. but. Um. Yeah, that's something that we we hope once the house is finished here, we can invite them over. And there's quite a few different types of people from all over the place on our street. Um. So we really hope to kind of expand our expand our taste buds a little bit more. Um, well, when you come to Toronto, finally, I need to take you because I I need to go check it out myself too because I discovered the place during the pandemic. But don't go downtown in Toronto enough to actually go try it. But it's called Tea and Bannock. It's uh, I'm going to read the description here. Cheery okay. laid back eatery dispensing Aboriginal dishes, including Buffalo elk and fry bread. Um, this place is the most well-known uh, indigenous food uh, establishment here in Toronto. That's, awesome. That's um, awesome. Mind you, there's, there's, there's several other places as well, like Pow Wow Cafe. And uh, yeah, there's other places, the names of which I will not try to pronounce because I don't want to offend anybody, but yes. Love it! I absolutely love it. I think we're we're definitely doing that. We're going to turn it into a um, uh, a podcast episode for your your previous show. We should just do that. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, um, just bring, bring back a little bit of talking with our mouths full. Into I mean, I'm doing that right now. I'm eating right. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's uh, that sounds like a great. Just to take it back to Infinity Pool, it sounds like a. Like did did um, Jessica finish watching it with you, or because she didn't want to finish it? Is that right? She didn't even start. Uh, it's not her so, cup of tea. It's not that. It's that outside of body horror, which already bothers her. The trailer for Infinity Pool showed people with faces that look disfigured, and that is something that really grosses her out and disturbs her. Like that type of disfigurement. Yeah. Um and I don't want to give away what any of that means or is. Okay. But that was the main reason why she didn't want to watch it. I have since told her that it's not that bad. But it doesn't matter. Like she won't watch it. Yeah. I can I can agree. I can uh, you know, I'll I'll definitely be watching it because I love who's involved. I love Skarsgård. I love I love to see like uh, I love watching what um Reitman, Ivan Reitman's son did with uh, the new Ghostbusters, and mm-hmm. it's great to see the the what, how the how the next generation of a family kind of contribute to cinema, and I'm, I'm quite curious about that because I've been a fan of Cronenberg's for not everything, but a lot of what he's done, um, and he's in Discovery, isn't he? He's got like a seven episode arc as a character. Uh, David Cronenberg has, yes, he is definitely in in our show. A uh, very important part of our show. No, obviously he's not in a, a lot of episodes. Yeah, and he's uh, in every episode, but he comes and goes. And I, I love everything about his work on our on on Discovery. It's just unfortunate that because of the location of his character, like relative to mine on the Federation headquarters ship, we could never share a scene or even be yeah. in the same video. So that was very yeah. sad. <laughs> Because I was like, I want to meet David Cronenberg. He's my yeah. favorite director of all time. He is, he is an absolute true legend. And um, I saw a trailer for his new film, uh, Crimes mm. of the Future. That was it was a film released last year. And it has got an absolute stellar cast. Viggo Mortensen, Leah Sidhu, Kristen Stewart, uh, Scott Speedman. There's it, And it looks... It looks very him, if you know what I mean. Um, it does. Uh, what's uh, unfortunate is, because I haven't seen it, and I will. 
No, but that's uh, that's what I wanted to make a point about. We should definitely should try watch and it. watch it. But I will tell you right now, it. my best friend, um, Kat, she really didn't like it and walked out of the theater. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to watch it. We're going to have to. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to. Honestly, if I end up liking it, that's gonna cause a riff in our friendship. No, no, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Kat. No, it won't. Please I can't imagine. Me. I can't imagine Cat's the kind of person that would walk out of, because she I, she, she is really one of the does. most supportive people of creators I've ever that, spoken to. Yeah, and if, you know, if the messaging is bad, uh, yeah. she will. I would too, actually. Like if I was watching something, it was clearly, let's say, uh, have you ever walked med- out of anything? No, I've only ever. I had to leave because uh so he, this is true true fact uh i have never finished any of the born movies because uh, and i've tried um because each and every time i watch one i i throw up is it the way it's shot or yeah i'm pretty one i'm pretty uh i'm yeah i'm pretty certain it's like the movie jackie brown same thing like i have never been able to get through it I've tried oh, three times. I've full on thrown up all three times. That's so, amazing. Uh, the Born movies are. I understand. I understand its action, and I think the way they were trying to film it was to have that urgency and the tension, but also like the action feeling with the camera not exactly being still. And I have motion sickness, and and something about those Born movies. So I have never actually finished one. I've always had to leave. Um, wow. Which is and again, I don't want to walk out. It's not that I want to walk out. I literally cannot finish. Because if I go in, yeah. I will be a problem for everybody else. I've walked out of one movie. I think it was in 1999 or 2000. And then there's a second movie a good number of years later that I, I, was, I wanted to walk out of. And because of the who it was, I'll tell you the two movies. The first movie was called Touching the Void. It's about mountain climbing. And I was, I rarely get bored by anything. I'm so open-minded when it comes to cinema. I love things that are super slow, action-packed, you know, controversial. I'll, if I know what I'm kind of going in for, in, into initially, I don't need to see a trailer, but I'm very open-minded. And I, I couldn't have been more bored by this film, Touching the Void. And it was lauded, Matt, you know, um, and I just detested it and the fact that i worked at the cinema that it was showing at i thought yeah i can afford to just leave and i've stopped films on netflix so it's almost the equivalent where i feel as though my time's been wasted because time's so precious now you know that with a family it's very very oh, yeah. precious any I'm kind of on what i watch now man exactly yeah and the other one was uh indiana jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull because oh, i felt God. i personally felt insulted that I couldn't believe Steven Spielberg had made the movie. I thought it was absolute garbage, and it kind of went against the standards. I won't say the standards of all three, but the standards that Spielberg had set in cinema. Like, I love Avatar, I love Avatar 2, and all of that, and I like all kinds of craziness. But the set pieces were terrible because they were all on green screen. Shia LaBeouf's casting I thought was dreadful. The everything about it was, was oh, it was bad. It was, was so bad. close to walking. Walk. I was so angry. I was. I had a rant about for about half an hour. I was driving home with a friend of mine. I had this huge rant about it. I hated it. Truly hated the film. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really, 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 really bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was just. I, fr- I was frustrated. You know, I was really frustrated by it. How bad that was. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with Harrison's age. It's got nothing to do with that at all. Oh no, not at all. Um, but yeah, I'm so passionate. I'm like, I'm the most passionate when I'm frustrated by something. It's which is ridiculous thing to say. But does ending a TikTok before it's finished, based on a scene from a, a one of those Christian movies, count as me walking out? Yeah, someone posted a five minute scene from some <laughs> Christian movie, and it's a man like this really old man coming home with flowers or for anyways so he he gets home he walks around looks like a creeper for no like whoever this actor is doesn't know what they're doing 
Yeah. And, and they're holding these flowers and then a, a much, 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 much younger woman comes out. They have a dispute and it turns out that that's not his wife or anything. That's the woman he's, I think, cheating on his wife with. Uh, and then she said one line and I just stopped the TikTok. I, like at first I was just watching it because I was like, oh my God, it's so bad. It's hilarious. But then she's like, blah, 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 cousin. That's her cousin. Oh my God. Stop the clip. I just I'm like, nope, nope. Swipe away. Swipe away. I'm done. I, you know, I can't. Nope. Yeah. This it's this badly acted, badly shot, badly edited, terrible sound. And on top of that, it's incestuous. Wonderful. And that's not just the review of cocaine bear. That is. <laughs> well, cocaine bear is a masterpiece, but we'll talk about it next. Oh, we're, we're going to have to have, we'll definitely dedicate just one episode to that too. Yeah, I think we have a quite a, a fluid conversation about that because I, I don't I don't touch upon any of it until we get to that point. So we get to the episode where the two of us will probably end our entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to each other that's ever it. again. That's it. We're that's done. Michael, it. Michael this is the line. Done. Yeah. I was like, I was looking at a message from Michael. This is uh, for people that I would recommend you I don't know to see it but you should find out about the film at the very least I was looking at a, a message watch from Michael the trailer and see if it's for you yeah when I saw very I, I obvious was, what kind of movie it is yeah I, I feel as though when I see Michael's messages about a movie I've watched he's gonna agree uh or passionately disagree I think he's like there's two options I that's pretty like... much it. Yeah, it's either I agree or like <laughs> I, I disagree so badly that that the two of yeah. us are just like, yeah, we can't get over this one. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, because I know I don't do it on purpose. I don't ever look look to open a can of worms about anything, because I've written political things that are about like I wouldn't say anti-government, but I would say how I feel, and then I've yeah. reined it in. I've written the whole thing, but. It puts out this negative energy into the world, and I only cry out about things when it's going to be acted upon. I don't do, I don't, you know, I'm not into signaling or riling people up on purpose. But when it comes to movies, oh my god! Like <laughs> the last Jedi, the last Jedi was one where I felt the most passionate or dislike towards because of the way things were executed and all of that. Anyway, that's a, that's a whole other thing. But then I read this message from Michael. It was, I was a. For everyone that doesn't know, I posted about it on uh, uh, Facebook, and I went on a bit of a rant because of certain, a certain, I will not say certain aspects, but most aspects of the movie. <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Oh no, here's Michael. He's going to totally disagree." <laughs> it's very, oh, it's very interesting sure. to see your perspective. That's why I think we absolutely need an episode just dedicated to Cocaine Bear. Yeah, and um, I, you know yeah. what? There's, there's dream, if you watch the movie and you. If you're watching this retrospectively when the film is released on digital or Blu-ray, watch it and have drinks, have drinks set aside, like shots of tequila or something. But drink every time they say the word cocaine. Mm -hmm. Every time they say cocaine, take a drink. That's that's the game for that movie. Last thing before we 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 get to <laughs> Do you want Pedro Pascal's voice telling you to do very naughty things. Because yeah. I own the Mandalorian Bop It. Bop It to start. Bop It. Twist it. Easy. Easy. Score one. High score one. Have you have you posted about this? Nope, and I TikTok? will. You've got to, because it it falls in line with his online not persona, but the way he's perceived online. Yeah, uh, that is it's that can be interpreted as pure filth. <laughs> See, I, I I have a crush on him right now. And... Yeah, he's great. Yeah, love him to bits. The only problem is that I have to like bop, twist, and pull 
on Grogu to, to have Pedro say those lines. You have to pull on Grogu to hear Pedro's voice. Saying pull it. Well, he says pull it, and I have to pull, pull it. This is getting really bad. <laughs> like, I can't Come on, you saw like... what I was doing on camera. I was pulling and twisting oh and God. bumping it. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. And they, every single time Pedro says something and I do some, whatever it is he asked me to do to Grogu, Grogu may like, ooh. Oh, my fuck. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Oh my That's God. a horror toy for all of you. Yeah. I don't yeah. know who came up with this idea. I don't know who okayed Somebody made a mistake with this, and that's why I picked it up. It was in the freaking bargain bin at Toys R- not Toys R Us at Walmart, so I had to get it because it was so dumb. And I was oh playing with God. it in the store and felt embarrassed. So I had but, to. But you couldn't help yourself. You had to pull and push it. Yes, and I'm not <laughs> going to put it down either. I'm just going to go and buy it because at this point, I just. Don't want people to even see what I I was pulling and <laughs> Oh, Michael, I think we need to end it there. Okay, all right, everybody. If you like listening to Pedro Pascal tell you to <laughs> bop it, twist it, or pull it, <laughs> follow us on Instagram <laughs> at the Hellbound Podcast. We would like to feature you on our social media if we can. If you have cosplay, makeup, music, anything else that you want featured, send us a DM, slip right in, and we will get you a feature. Again, that's at the Hellbound Podcast. Uh, and as always, harness the darkness. Mm-hmm.